The Enchanter by R. With help from Morning Glory. Chapter 1 Discoveries. One day, King Starswirl of Manulus Terum decided to leave court for a few days of fresh air. He and Somnambula, one of his royal advisers and close friends, decided to take a trip into the northern mountains. Since no pony lived in the northern mountains, they declined guards, and their other friends had other business to attend to. After three peaceful days of walking, they reached the foothills. For their first day on the mountains, everything was calm. They pitched their tents that night and settled in. But then Starswirl heard some rocks shift outside his tent. He poked his head out and called, Somnambula, was that you? Was what me? she answered. I heard something disturb some rocks. I'm not sure what it was, though. No, I've been in my tent. I'm going to check it out. All right, call if you need help. He stepped out of his tent and cast a simple light spell, causing a startled yelp from some bushes about twenty feet away from camp. Hello? Who's out there? he called. A light green earth pony stepped out of the bushes. Stone seeker, sir. I thought you were the Taken, but you're not from the valley, are you? No, we are from the plains of Manulus Terum, about two days' trot south. I was unaware any pony lived in these mountains. How many of you are there? Starswirl asked. And who are these Taken? queried Somnambula, who had emerged from her tent. They are those whose wills have been taken by the dark wizard Sombra, replied Stone, forced to help enslave their own neighbors by his foul magic. We will help you save your valley, said Somnambula. Perhaps we should return to the capital and get help, asked Starswirl. How many would perish if we were to delay by a week, asked Somnambula. There is an execution scheduled for several members of the resistance we found yesterday. he found yesterday. He plans on killing them in the town square the day after the morrow. Somnambula turned to face Starswirl. We cannot let these ponies die. Very well. We shall try to save your village. Oh, thank you, kind lords, said Stone, with relief clearly written on his face. He paused and then continued. Though there is one more problem. Starswirl sighed. What else is there? A golden dragon, the biggest any pony in the village has ever seen. It seems to serve Sambra as his muscle dealing with any large-scale resistance while he and his Taken root out the smaller cells. Why would such a noble creature serve such evil? wondered Somnambula. Perhaps for greed, as dragons do love their gems, posited Starswirl. But Somnambula replied, I suspect there may be more to this tale. Is it possible for us to talk with the dragon? It makes its lair in a cave a short way up one of the mountain faces that you can see from the valley. It is only lightly guarded. You may be able to sneak past, said Stone. Very well, but I shall be prepared to teleport away the moment the dragon tries anything, said Starswirl. I am sure we will be fine. You worry too much, Somnambula added. Better safe than sorry, was Starswirl's reply. Shall I take you now? It may be easier under the cover of night than in the broad daylight, prompted Stone. Yes, I doubt sleep will come easy after these revelations, and time is of the essence, said Starswirl. And so they headed out, with Stoneseeker leading the way further into the mountains, towards the dragon's lair. As they approached the dragon's lair from above, they saw two earth ponies watching a path that led down into a village in the center of the valley. Fortunately, they were standing motionless and facing the wrong way to see the party. Here it is, the dragon's lair, whispered Stoneseeker, gesturing at a large hole in the mountain. I don't know why he posts a guard, seeing as no pony would be foolish enough to attack a dragon with a force that would fall to two ponies. He looked at his two allies. I hope you know what you're doing here. We go in, talk to the dragon, and see what to do from there, replied Somnambula. And if it wants a fight, said Starswirl, I teleport us out of there before it kills us, though I will cast invisibility on us before we go, just in case those guards turn around. 
All right, then, hop on, said Somnambula, crouching and flaring her wings. Star Swirl climbed on top of her and held on tight, casting the invisibility spell as Somnambula leaped from the ed ledge and gently descended onto the stone in front of the cave. One of the Taken looked back at the cave. Star Swirl prepared a sleep spell and waited. After a moment that seemed to stretch on forever, the pony faced forward once more. No speech, no indifferent shrug, nothing. The pair then slowly crept into the cave. Whew, that was close, thought Star Swirl. I thought for sure he had noticed us, though the complete lack of emotions. He shuddered. After about fifty feet, the cave turned to the right, opening up into a wide, spacious cavern with a huge dragon curled up in the center. Star Swirl peered around the corner. He heard the life, light hoof falls of Somnambula stop just ahead of his position. Have you noticed, she whispered, that there are no gems or gold? Star Swirl looked over the cavern once more, noting that aside from the dragon it appeared completely empty. Yes, quite strange, he whispered back. Dragons seldom left their hordes, and even then any residence of a dragon would have treasure in it. They were obsessed with the stuff, never leaving home without it, and a dragon of this size would surely have had a large collection. Can you prevent sounds from our conversation from reaching the guards? asked Somnambula. Starswirl took a step back and cast a sound barrier across the tunnel just behind him. Done. Hello, if I may, I desire to have a word with you, called Somnambula. The dragon quickly lifted its head and looked uh, towards the tunnel. If you wish to talk, then reveal yourself, that we may speak face to face. Starswirl ended the invisibility spell and stepped out to stand by Somnambula. Very well, here we are, he said, while mentally readying a teleportation spell. Who are you, and why have you come? asked the dragon. I am Somnambula, and this is Star Swirl. We have come to ask you why you are serving Sombra. Hmm, and why do you seek this knowledge? he asked, staring intently at them. "'Because we have been told he forces these ponies to serve him with dark magic,' answered Somnambula. "'If this is so, then why? Why would you serve such an evil?' "'Because I must,' growled the dragon. "'The arrogant whelp has the bloodstone scepter, an ancient magic that holds sway over any dragon. As long as he has it, I must follow his orders.' "'Then perhaps we can help?' said Star Swirl. Do you know where he keeps it? You would aid in this struggle, just like that? asked the dragon. Risk your lives for those you hardly know. Why? Because, said Somnambula, we cannot stand by and let the innocent suffer when we have the chance to help them. Right now we are the best hope for this village. If we can save them, then we shall. Well put, Lightbringer. I am glad we see eye to eye in this. I am Antiquorum, and I shall help you save this village. The whelp keeps the scepter with him at all times. He resides in a stone keep in the centre of the village. It is well guarded. However, he only expects earth ponies, as they are the only race in the village. I see, murmured Star Swirl. Thank you for this information. Is there anything else we should know? No, I have nothing else, he replied. I wish you a bountiful hunt. Then we shall be off. Hopefully, when we next meet, you shall be free, said Somnambula, as she and Star Swirl headed back towards the tunnel entrance. This has been The Enchanter. I hope you're enjoying so far, and if you wish to see more, you can click Click the link below for the rest of the story in print. I have not yet done the rest of the reading, but I plan to, especially if any interest comes of this. I wish you a pleasant day.